everyone it's Vanessa I'm here to show you some of the books that I have out from the library and I'm thinking of reading in the near future so this is kind of like a mid-December TBR into a little bit of early January I suppose I'm off from work for the next like two and a half weeks and I'm hoping to get through a lot of these books I've kind of been collecting them and I really haven't shown any since like October because I my nonfiction November TBR was strictly nonfiction and that's all I read pretty much that whole month first we'll start with the adult and young adult fiction that I have um, I have quite a few right now the first one is lot by Brian Washington I'm really anticipating his new book memorial but I wanted to start with his first book lot these are stories and you know that this year I was actually kind of surprised by liking one short story collection that I read so I'm a Attempting to read more short story collections. Another short story collection that I have is Daddy by Emma Klein. I'm really excited that there's a new Emma Klein book out. If you have followed my channel for a really long time, The Girls was one of my favorite books that I read when it came out that year. I feel like it was 2017, 2018, so a while ago. And I've just been patiently awaiting for the next thing by Emma Klein. I don't think she's everyone's cup of tea but I really enjoy the way that she writes and especially I enjoy the themes and characters that she usually focuses on. I find them relatable in like a, a flawed way like I know that they're horrible people and making bad decisions but I enjoy reading from their perspectives anyway so I'm excited to read this one. Another one that I have on audiobook um, from Libby is Moonflower Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This was one of my most anticipated reads of the year just because of how much I enjoyed Magpie Murders. Um, I've heard it's maybe not as great as Magpie Murders but I think that the mystery is still supposed to be interesting enough and I'm interested to see. It's really big which I didn't necessarily expect. The audiobook is like 18 hours but I remember how quickly I read Magpie Murders which also had a really long audiobook so I'm hoping that the same thing happens here and that this is one of the best mysteries that I read this year because I don't know if I've rated a mystery four stars this year. I think I've rated some three and three and a half stars. Another one that I've been really excited about that I saw, I've seen everywhere but the last place that I saw it was on Deboki's channel and I really liked what she had to say about it. So I have Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I know that it has to do with working in a lab and that's like all that I know about it and I really don't like going into books knowing that much. So that's all that I need. I also have Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I've been slowly reading more and more contemporary romances. It's something that has been nice in between other things um, and I don't know if I've found like the best yet but i want to keep trying them especially from um authors of color i'm also interested to read the lager queen of minnesota and this is a book that i've seen in quite a few places some of my co-workers have really enjoyed this book this year it just seems like it'll be that family story that i maybe was looking from um all adults here by emma straub something a little bit uplifting but still not something where there are so many characters that I lose sense of them and that I don't even care about those characters. I'm hoping that I care about these characters. And then I have two young adult things. One is He Must Like You. I don't know if I've shown this one before. I probably have. I know that it deals with sexual harassment. I've read quite a few YAs about that this year. I'm almost done with grown right now which also deals with those sort of topics um, and I'm interested to see what this one does with it. So I have this one checked out as well. And then the last thing I have from that's young adult is a poetry collection. This is one that I read oh, maybe like three or four years ago during this time, so Christmas time. Um, and it was a time when I wasn't feeling very well, you know, like about finding a job and finishing school and things like that. And the poems in this book really lifted me up. I really, really enjoyed them. There's one particular poem in here that I love so much and I'm excited to just read through these again. I also really enjoy the illustrations in this poetry collection are beautiful. Let me show you really quickly the kids fiction that I have, which is not as many. I'm also really excited about Before the Ever After, which took forever to come in from the library. I think it came out in September and I, I don't think I got it until like late October, so if something was happening. I know that this is in verse, which I'm excited about. I also have When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. I think I'm a little bit less interested in this one, but I want to make room for it because of all of the buzz that is surrounding it because of the Newberry. So that is what I have it. I just know that there's like an, a legit tiger in the story and usually fantasy elements like that don't work for me. And then I have two books. I have Finding Langston and then Leaving Lyman. And these are two books by um, Lessa Klein Ransom. And it's kind of a duology. They are magnificently short and they're supposed to just pack a punch. I've seen this on Amanda's channel um, at the Curly Reader before and I feel like she really enjoyed 
this one. So I want to read the first one and then I want to read the one that came out this year that was also maybe being considered for the Newberry, but because it's a follow-up, I don't think it's gonna win. Then let me show you the three graphic novels that I have that are newer to my pile. One is an adult one called Maids by Katie Skelly. I know that this is was set in the 1930s and they're like maids who are taking care of this house and then they like plot to kill everyone in the house. It seems kind of weird um, and strange and if you look at the art style too, I'm like, this is gonna be a weird one, isn't it? So I will read it and I will let you know what I think. Two more graphic novels, one that I've been excited about for months months like maybe six months or more is measuring up by lily lamott and Anne Zhu, and this is a middle grade graphic novel about a cooking competition that the main character joins to try to get her grandmother to join her in america for her birthday just regular realistic drama which i like in kids graphic novels and then the other one that i've been looking forward to is called seance tea party this is by raymina yi i know that it's just a witchy graphic novel and that is what's drawing me in as well as the illustrations i don't know that much more about it and i I think that's all that I want to know. And then I'll show you my nonfiction pile. A book that I started at work because it's so short that I want to read through again from beginning to end is Ruby Bridges, This Is Your Time. This is just a little biography about Ruby Bridges from her own perspective and what it was like going to school and how she had to have the National Guard basically take her to school this would work really well for younger kids like first to third grade one that i think is going to be my next read just because i have the audiobook and it's going to become due soon at the library as well as moonflower murders is notes on a silencing by lacey crawford and this is a memoir that has to do with the author's sexual assault at a um, prep school where like a private school and kind of the culture surrounding that kind of environment i've heard magnificent things about this book so i'm really excited to finally get to it i feel like i've checked out a couple times and just was never the right time and i had to give it back because other people were in line for it but i think it's time for me to read it now another book that i have is called inferno a memoir of motherhood and madness i believe this is by katherine cho and i believe that's to do with post-traumatic stress disorder after you give birth and i think i also have this one on audiobook i also have five days at memorial it's from a university library so it came with no jacket this is a book that's been on my tbr for ages and ages and then after reading katrina during nonfiction november i got re-inspired to check this out i also have the audiobook of it i've tried to listen to the audiobook before and i've never propelled myself to read more than like an hour of it so i'm hoping that having the actual text will help as well and that's basically about the memorial hospital and katrina and how doctors had to basically triage care because they didn't have any power like any electrical power to keep all of everyone alive and then what happened after all of that and then i have two more one of them is the book of atlantis black by betsy bonner and this book is about a sister trying to understand what her sister's final months were like she was found dead and she was found with this name atlantis black and it's her sister piecing together the final months of her sister's life through social media and all of the other things that she can kind of cull together and then last but not least was one that i saw on um jacqueline's channel at six minutes for me i think this is the american title of it because it's a stella prize winner from australia and it's see what you made me do and this is a book all about domestic violence i read another one this year no visible bruises and that one was interesting and definitely eye-opening but i'm curious to see what this one will do with that um to kind of expand my reading into the topic as well so that's why i have this one checked out and this is another sad one that is only available on audible exclusive so i can't listen to it um, but i will do my best to try to read it so that's it for all of the books that i currently have out that are newer that you haven't maybe seen and that i hope to read in the next few weeks i think I may post a couple vlogs of that experience. I have some books behind me as well that are kind of like ones that I've had out for a long time and I'm thinking of maybe doing a vlog of that, um, of reading kind of my, my backlist TBR cart books and then reading some of these new ones as well. So I hope that you look forward to that and I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, if you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.